Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland from the edge of Frontierland. What do you say? Let's do a complete walk through Frontierland and see what's different right now at the reopening of Disneyland in 2021. That's right, we are standing at the edge of Fort Wilderness. Let's go through and see how Frontierland is holding up. One of the first things that I noticed is this little gym right here. If you look over there, you can see that that tree is being held up by a little piece of like scaffolding that's coming out of the water. And I love that because every now and again, we all need a little bit of help from our friends. But when I look at Frontierland, one of the things that I love about Frontierland and Adventureland is viewing them from the outer banks. Let's just step back, backtrack just for a second and just look out at this quiet little pond that just sets Adventureland and Frontierland back off from the hub. And typical non-15% capacity, you would see just tons of people there. And then this gives us the ability to go back into the actual land, but just hidden from all the trees that have grown here. And then walking on one of my favorite quiet paths. I just love how these outer shots of the hub keep us separated from everybody. And then we get to walk on our private path here into Fort Wilderness. Sometime if you're here and you're bored, make sure to count the various flags because there are 13 flags on the outer edge of Fort Wilderness for the 13 original colonies. And this bench right here, sitting on the edge of the Frontierland berm, looking over at this view, is there a better place to spend an afternoon or a snack at? Disneyland. Let's look back up at the canopy that we just walked through. Really love this area as one of the original lands of Disneyland. Over the last couple years, we've seen Disney expand the pathways to make it easier to get through. Because one of the downsides of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge being on the outer bank of the park this is not really a direct way to get there. So Frontierland and Adventureland both had to be sort of edited to make that easier. And we can see now the brand new ultra, ultra wide bridge to get us in. And then right over there, that is where we started today's adventure. But if we look back from the edge of Frontierland, and we follow the waterway up, just what a nice visual barrier. What a nice audio barrier from all the hecticness that's happening. And then if we step over here, I'm gonna say Frontierland might offer one of the best views into its neighbor, Adventureland. All right, let's step inside. The new, very expand walkway. As always, you see a lot of storytelling up above. Here is our third cannon in Disneyland. You know that there are two that flank each side of Town Square up at Main Street, right in front of the train station when you come in. And unfortunately right now, one of the shops that didn't reopen is the Westward Ho Trading Company. <laughs> it just didn't make it back open and it makes sense. It's a high touch store. It's one of the smallest stores inside of the park where there's not a ton of room for guests in there. So they would probably have to keep it pretty limited if they were open. And then of course, pin trading just can't happen right now. And speaking of callbacks from Main Street, we have our second cigar Indian out front. 
I know the technical term or the proper or polite term is Native American, but they are referred to as cigar Indians, so. Throw me a bone, trying to do the right thing in both ways. And then the second part of Frontierland that is closed is the shooting exposition, which is the last remaining shooting gallery in all of Disneyland. And at one point there was a shooting gallery over on Main Street. There was a small couple of shooters over when you got outside of Pirates in New Orleans Square. And there was also a shooting range inside of Adventureland. So this is the last one, boarded up. Once again, high touch, but I do enjoy all of the fireworks there along the upper canopy. And even though technically now half of the thoroughfare of Frontierland is closed up, what this moment offers you is unique experiences. So being able to sit on the sidewalk and have lunch with your family or your friends that is something that hasn't really been possible in Frontierland until this bizarre moment in time. And then we also see a lot of things sort of being dual used. So Rancho is not serving food, but it is doing double duty as sort of a picnic area. And also, as we see over here, they are using this outer area for extra folks that need to go over to Big Thunder Mountain. Let's let's take a socially distant cruise here through this corridor of Frontierland. We'll go a little slow to give everybody a distance, but the Great American West also touches the edge of where the Spanish part of North America begins. So I do love that Frontierland is accurate in that eventually, if you go so far west, you will feel the Spanish influences of North America. So the fact that Frontierland eventually works its way to this Mexican flair is just great storytelling and it's also being accurate. As we peek the camera in here, you can see that the restaurant is not operational, but all those great light fixtures, like a tiny version of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And then one of the best cut throughs in all of Disneyland is this almost like Western mine shaft that will just cut you right through the hub back into Frontierland. How you doing, sir? Or give you a shortcut to the Fantasy Fair where we happen to stumble upon Snow White. And the evil queen just hanging out there giving these two an experience another one of my favorite fantasy land details but just like that we can go back through sort of the mine cave into frontier land so on a really busy post fireworks night one of the best paths that you can take and flank there at the end with a decent sized men's room and ladies room, which might also come in handy post waiting for a firework show up by the castle, looking for that fast path to get somewhere on the Western side of the park, which Frontierland is one of the most evolving lands in the history of Disneyland because it literally was the Wild West when the park first opened up because it was so easy just to plant more wilderness, put in a donkey ride, put in various different rides and give people this direction to go into. What's up, bud? How you doing? But I tell you what's fascinating to me is if you stand back this far and you look off into the distance, you can see that green facade that is up above the edge of the Plaza Inn. And that building is themed that way for two purposes. 
you can see the green facade right in there and then the little bit of peach that is the back side of the star trader believe it or not but it has to be groomed on his on this side to look like it's a part of main street usa and that is really only visible from when you're up at the train station or exiting here out of Frontierland, where the way that the land is graded, you need that extra little bit of Main Street to keep selling the story of Main Street USA and to not have it collide too much with Tomorrowland. All right, we've walked along the northern side. Now let's check out the side that's actually open. So much great detailing. We have the paymaster. Can we go in here? <laughs> right? One of the best ATMs. Is there a better ATM inside of all of Disneyland than this one right here? God, I love that. So great. The old paymaster. And then here on the outer hub where eventually Adventureland and Frontierland have to touch and that seam happens right here on the edge of this beautiful walkway where the river comes to an end with all the flowers over here and then the woods on this side which one of the stores that's still open. Now, I don't know if I can come in this direction, so I'm not just gonna walk in, because right now a lot of the stores have a very specific way that they want us to go through. But if you bring your own water bottle, this is a great water refueling station where you got the two fountains, you got the water refill there, and then also the old school pump to make it feel legit. Great, great subtle storytelling in Frontierland if you just slow down and take a look at it all. Do I love, love Disneyland mailboxes? It's just that added little bit of flair that makes it feel more real. And then we have all the lanterns up around the top. We can just come in here real quick. Now this store used to go over to the back side and take us right into Adventureland, but I believe it is closed on the Adventureland side. Got a little brother bear happening there. Actually on a little mine train. Let's see, our frontier fashioned pennies. And then the new Magic is Back collection. I do enjoy this sort of fake idea that if this were a real mining town, you could probably go up and rent a room. but obviously not the case, just telling that story. And then the cashier here, the cash wrap has that old Western vibe of maybe an old post office counter that you'd go up to. And then a giant carved wooden buffalo to pay tribute to the West. Buffalo being one of the greatest resources that brought folks out this way and then once again you get those stairs that go up as if this were a saloon and you could just go up and maybe see some friends have a drink rent a room and we step back in the farthest corner this old door with beautiful patina and we can get a good view of those American star stairs 
taking us out. Just, as always, look up to catch all the storytelling. I haven't seen this counter used in a while, but man, I wish, wish that I would. And then you see that shortened second floor, which just makes this whole Western thoroughfare feel so much bigger than what it is. Our rails are just boards that have leather, not even boards, sticks, right? That the Frontiers folks would have gathered and then take a leather strap and bound them all together. Walking down this thoroughfare here on the southern side of Frontierland on the wooden planks just has such a great old America feel to it. I'm assuming I wasn't around then. I'm old, but I'm not that old. And then we come up to the horseshoe. Which of course would be, you know, the drinking hole, the entertainment spot. It is roped off. It is currently closed. Love that gold foil embossment or gold foil. It's gold foil leaf, not embossment. And then we have Miguel up on the upper balcony. And I can definitely see, he just, just left us. But I can definitely see the vibe of Frontierland skewing more into Spanish American than traditional Wild West America. I can just see it going that way. It makes sense. It fits the population of our park, the diversity that California and Disneyland has been chasing. I just, I love that vibe so much. And then over here, we just have another Disneyland mailbox really selling the Western vibes. And they don't run this building all the way to the edge. They take this moment to create this little break because it just makes it feel more like a little, little cowboy town versus just one big building. And then we'll step over here at the very edge of Frontierland at the Stage Store Cafe, which is operational has the balcony on the top. Just that little break between the two balconies makes your eye see three businesses instead of just one or two. And then we have this quiet little understated wall, right? Which this here becomes our transition from Western America to New Orleans to being on the edge of the river. Love those Disneyland gradients of storytelling where we easily go from one land to the next. And speaking of things that we got to take advantage of right now, as we do have half of frontier land being closed, looking on the positive side, we do have this area down here that you can see lots of guests today taking advantage of which normally there would never ever be these little cafe tables here or the umbrellas. We're lucky today it's an overcast day as May Gray is working its way into Southern California. But this little food court here, right? This little area to eat, that is a once and a fan's lifetime opportunity to just enjoy it in a way that we haven't been able to. And then one of the two attractions currently operational right now is the Mark Twain doing a lot of a lot of heavy lifting for Frontierland and just seeing that boat go around the rivers of America it lets you know you're in Disneyland an opening day classic one of my favorite attractions but here we get that nice shot of Stage Door Cafe the Golden Horseshoe the big anchors that would lure you in to this little cowboy establishment and then as we look our way down the main thoroughfare, Yay! hey, peace out. And then as we work our way down the main thoroughfare, the fact that every building is painted a different color, has a different vibe every 10, 15 feet, it really sells the story that this is indeed a little Western establishment. 
and then these nice islands that Disney puts in the middle. Visual break for both sides, sound barrier, big barrier over here. So people that are sitting here or walking down don't make noise for people that are dining on the other side. And we've seen Disney get really creative on how they use extra space for their rides to give people social distant cues. Big Thunder Mountain operating at 20 minute wait time, which is a lot because here lately it's been about five. And obviously right now we do not need fast passes because the entire park is at 15,000 capacity max. Park can hold 80,000, so <laughs> we're doing pretty good on our capacity. One of the only food vendors, outdoor food vendors that's available right now is that one back there where you can get the famous turkey leg or Mickey pretzel. They consolidated a lot of different items into one stand. But then we can watch guests make their way to the lower area. And as I love always talking about one of the genius things about Big Thunder Mountain was the idea that they made the line subterranean, you know, below the grade that we're walking on, which not only makes the Bryce Canyon inspired Big Thunder Mountain seem taller, but so much more enjoyable to look at, so much more picturesque when there's not hundreds of people around it. Those folks are hidden from us below our sight lines as they put the queue underneath this hill that they graded in. As we continue our tour of Frontierland, of course we gotta do Big Thunder Trail. And that sound that every Disney fan loves this little sign down here, no claim jumping. The water adding in that kinetic energy, but also telling the story of a mining town where you would go to the creek and pan and mine for gold. You see the waterfall starts pretty high up, works its way on this back side of the ravine. The waterfall being definitely different than this irrigation system for the actual mining that takes place. Oh, Frontierland, home to two of the best sounds in the park. The sound of Big Thunder whipping by you, and then the sound of the Mark Twain going through the rivers of America. Two of the best Disneyland siren songs. And now with the lower capacity, we see these little enclaves turned into a resting area or a makeshift dining area. The new cascading rock work put up, protecting our sight lines of seeing into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge because it has to taper up so narrow here. It also keeps the train distant from us. So even though the path narrows right here, up at the edge of Fantasyland where it swells again, we just see one of those things we've never seen before. A makeshift dining area popped up where you can hang out, demask, catch your breath, have a snack, hang with your family, hang with your friends, get lost in conversation, and just really get to take in this surreal time at Disneyland where everything feels like a VIP experience. And as we come up to the cast member entries, we see the rusted color concrete turn into more of an English cobblestone. And we know that we have worked our way once again to another edge of Frontierland. 
But as we circle back, look at this massive retaining wall. And then once again, Disney cuts out this piece of land, put trees in, speakers in, just really giving us the wilderness vibes. So the moment that you come out of Fantasyland, you feel like you're someplace else. Hey, hey, how's it going, guys? You guys having fun today? Yeah, you. First, first visit back? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I won't interrupt your lunch, but thank you for saying hi. Yeah. Have fun today. So then we come over here on the edge. And there's people on these benches that I do not want to bother. But if we come over here to this open spot, look just how high this grade goes and how the rock work is stair-stepped to really create this very, very tall pitch that sells the idea of Frontierland so that when you're up on top of this road right here, when you're up here staring down, this wall, that acts as a visual barrier and the bend in the road is there so that you don't see this. And even though the outer edge of it is very frontier land with the rusted out plaque there in the middle, all of the patina that's coming down and the way that the board is put with mining style lanterns halfway through the bridge until the bridge actually goes from mining Western California, Western America, with all the big railroad stakes stacked up. And then we hit that seam where we're at Galaxy's Edge. And now it's been rock work carved and pushed through to go to some place that's outer worldly. But that right there, that's the seam where one story perfectly becomes part of a secondary story. And as we work our way around, we once again, we see these retainer walls, how they stair step, the fences in there. Just creating those visual levels from the stagecoach to level number one, to level number three, to the trees that are planted up there that make them feel so much taller than what they are, but it's that they're planted on top of a shelf and a little hidden treat for you. And as we come around to the other side, you see more of that Bryce Canyon style rock work. They just keep telling the story that what happens over here keeps going in this direction, allowing you to really feel like you are in this environment. We are on the pathway back to the heart frontier land. And even though half of it is closed, And I do love the half that's closed. The half that's alive, the Mark Twain, Big Thunder, one of the best shops in all of Disneyland. Frontierland still has a lot of spirit, even with one of its arms tied behind its back. Here we have, once again, one of these little cutaways creating space for people to take a break, to relax in this environment that's been built by the Imagineers. And then we get another awesome retainer wall hiding the Disneyland Railroad from us. We see the railroad go overhead. But then as we work our way over here, it's just softly part of the background story. We have the old postmaster's office, some Western debris over on the side. But those retainer walls, getting the train up and out of our sight, but also creating this alleyway that we're in that is all frontier vibes keeping us locked inside the story. And I do love that bending roof with the old smokestack coming out of it. 
Look at those wanted signs there. Nobody can even get over to see those, but they're there. One for a missing donkey, and then the back in five minutes from the postmaster, and even the light that's right in front of us. Looks like that it is all just stone that they grabbed, put some mortar in there, and we're able to create that light fixture. And then once again, we see that transition of where Frontierland, the Bryce Canyon inspired rocks, the railway of the Great West cuts into an outer worldly experience, creating these amazing walls to skew everything over, more matching, more matching rock work from the lamp that we were just at. And if you've ever drove out west, you know you see lots of gates like these separating the various ranches and the service road to go up to do maybe maintenance over for the rivers or to get over to the train. Perfectly designed with these cuts in the middle to make it look old and overgrown, but I think we both can tell that a maintenance truck could easily work its way up this grade to go where it needs to go. But the storytelling of it is that this is off perimeters and that the wilderness keeps going in that direction. All right, friends, let's work our way back over to the Mark Twain, staying on the western side of Big Thunder Trail. And then we have done our set and we have done our spring 2021 check-in on Frontierland. And you know it's spring because we see baby ducklings getting out of the water there, moving along the bank. The other day I caught a colony of turtles hanging out there. But as we work our way on the bridge, we gotta love this inner park berm up here that keeps Rivers of America separated from us over on Big Thunder Trail. Outdoor vending cart is closed. Most of them are closed. I think Disneyland is having a little bit of a staffing problem at the moment. But the beauty of this rock work in that berm is it keeps us from seeing this moment. Then when we stand up on this hill, graded by Disneyland, to keep Big Thunder, to keep Big Thunder feeling very tall, but to keep the line of Big Thunder out of our perimeter and to make it look epic to look down on the river. We just get the feeling that we are back in the rivers of America, back on the edge of frontier land. Hello, ma'am. And at one of the best quiet spots you will find, to get one of the best views you'll find, not only the river, but back at Frontierland and the Mark Twain. And where it says Disneyland USA on the bottom of the boat, I love, love, love that. And then here is our berm from the other side. Imagine if this isn't here and you just see people coming and going, you see everything clear as day. The rivers of America wouldn't feel separated from frontier land. So friends, there you go. We have walked around the entire perimeter of frontier land to see what's open, to see what's closed and see how it's all changed, how it's all evolving we'll do it again to see how disneyland keeps getting used to the reopening how it restaffs how it reshapes itself but thank you so much for taking this journey with me i hope you got to see an old friend and i hope you learned something new and hey until the next time i see you walking through Frontierland, i'll see you back here on the channel with more disneyland updates thank you so much for joining me i hope you enjoyed this walk to Frontierland.